what's going on everybody so um, I made a video a while back talking about um, changing presets that you may have bought um, from somebody else to make it sound more like you and I in that video I kind of uh, just showed some of the things um, and I, I didn't really explain them and some things have changed since then I think we're all um, if we're if you're running in the modeling world a lot of us are switching over to the extreme realism X or IRs from tone factor and I think they've all um, most of every everything that I've seen it, it's making an impact for everybody so uh, specifically with the way the drives uh, react when you push the amps with them and so um, I wanted to make this video solely about that and about um, not only the new impulse responses but uh, drives as well and so if uh, if you if you don't like going down the rabbit hole um, long story short I was using the Bethel patches um, and I didn't like the drives and then obviously when they update things they put out new amps you're going to want to switch and use those things as well but uh i had been using the matchless dc30 preset from tone factor and then the benson uh preset as well and uh when they came out with the new um extreme realism hours they didn't have the matchless so i went back to using the ac30 and i'm still using the benson so um here is what the new amp uh ir sound like for both of those and so i'm running um again the ac30 with the greenbacks and then the benson uh chimera and i think it's i'm running with the benson i'm running okay so the the specific ones that i'm using are the ac2 by 12s uh greenbacks the 545s three I guess position three it would be the enhanced and then i'm using the uh, ceramic five four five three enhanced by for the benson um and that's what this uh they sound like with um no drive whatsoever And so I'm pretty much just running some EQ or I'm running some compression and then the two amps and then I'm ru I'm running a room and a spring reverb and and typically I don't have the spring on unless the part calls for it but uh, the room I kind of keep on just to kind of give it some some feel like you're sitting in a room or like that would be mic'd mic'd in a, in a backstage room or something like that. I just like the fullness. And so, um, and, and I guess it's worth a mention, I am on the neck pickup, which I, I can't remember what it is. I picked this guitar up a while back. Um, but the bridge pickup is a pearly gate, so this is what the bridge would sound like. So kind of honky tonk sounding. Um, I like the I like the bridge for this guitar. I like the um, I like I like the bridge, but it's it's I tend I tend to stay towards the neck pickup. Sometimes I'll blend the two versus the neck and the bridge. Here would be blended. So kind of a good just in between so the real part of the video I think the impulse responses sound great but the the drives that Hislop and them use to reenact that kilt Bethel 
kind of sound that we all know and love. Uh, I do not prefer. I, I like um, a little different sound, and it may be because I never had the V1. I always had the V2 kill, and so I ran it as like a second stage drive paired with a Morning Glory, and so um, my ears tend to to go towards like a um, a more broken up amp with some pushing amp more and so um, I have my drive set up this way I have a fuzz and then I have a like a boost and then I have my first stage drive and the reason I do it that way is because I found that when stacking them all together, it sounds better when I push the drive. Like it's almost backwards, which is kind of stupid, but I think it sounds better when I push the drives that make the amp distort, which makes it sound more like an amp distorting to me rather than the opposite, which you would push an amp to distort the pedals. And so I know that's confusing. But the way I have it set up is I have a fuzz, a boost, and then my overdrive. So first stage drive, which I would say is the kill, I use the Minotaur on the Helix. And so here would be clean. And I'll switch to the bridge just because most of, a lot of people use a bridge style pickup most of the time. Here would be with the drive. So here's with the bridge or the neck. So I just like that sound a little bit better. And then here would be the boost built into that. So here's the boost just by itself. So it doesn't really add like that much to it, I don't think. So here would be both together. So here's with just the first stage drive, not the boost. With the boost. So it adds just a little bit of more gain, um, just enough to make it recognizable so just a little bit of a volume boost but then it like kind of uh, starts to break up a little bit more and then here would be uh, I have a setting on here that boosts the amp and the amp gain and channel volume too so here's with here's both the first drive and the boost with the amp gain. Without it. With it. And then here would be kind of all in with the fuzz. really good for stuff like Egypt or even like I played uh, when I have a good buddy in town I let him play lead on freedom uh, by Jesus culture and so he would be kind of like the rhythm part so um, works good with that as well um, and so where this makes a big impact is, and so, and I think the, uh, the fuzz that I'm using is 
So it's the Minotaur with a kinky boost is what I use for the boost. And then I boost the drive, the amp gain, and the channel volume on my amps just by a hair, just for more volume increase and a gain increase. And then the fuzz is the Tima, or Tima, Timmy, whatever it's supposed to be, with gain cranked all the way up. And then uh, just some low end because I feel like a lot of times it, when you start adding fuzzes in, especially with the Helix, you get a high, digity, pitchy, kind of weird sound that I don't like. And so I add in a little bit of low end with that and take some of that top end out. So here's just the fuzz by itself and I think it sounds great. Especially with the single cool. makes the impact and what I was getting at is when you start adding in um, you start adding in the reverbs and the delays and you start pushing those so um, with those impulse responses it makes it so much better so this is clean just some reverb um, so I turn on like kind of like a I think it's a glitz is what I'm using but it's kind of like a cloud reverb and then I have the room reverb on as well and this is with no drive So, just kind of generic sound in there, but when you start adding in these drives is when those XRs really start to get that woolly sound and they break up, especially even with the low drives. start stacking a little bit more drive. And then a little bit more reverb. This is high. This is like kind of my lead tone. I'm, I'm just kind of playing lightly, so you can still. It really just makes a huge impact on your drives and the way that they attack that amp and they just makes like, 
um, a really just oscillating, like that's the best way I can describe it. It's just it's like a fuzzy oscillating sound um, that like really just packs an impact or packs a punch to your, your tone. So um, I guess you can look at something like even, this is going to be a lot slower, but even on a song such as... Um, Uh, we praise I just love I just I love that breakup and I feel like um, maybe some people are searching to understand like why it does those things and why um, that breakup is so important and how it breaks up is so important it, it like it's one thing for it to break up and just sound digitally but that's where these guys have really made an impact is making it break up and sound like an amp being pushed and making it sound real. So hope that helps. If you have any questions, like always, um, comment and I'll answer as best as I can. I'll tag those guys in it so that maybe they can help answer some of your questions. And uh, yeah, that's it. Y'all have a good one.